Welcome back to another episode of Animal of the Week. In this week's video, we'll look at a bit of plastic floating around in the ocean. Oh wait, sorry, no, that's not a bit of colourful plastic sheet, that's actually an eel. The ribbon eel. Rhino morena quasita. These eels are, well, eels, so they belong to the order Anguilliformes, and more specifically, they're actually part of the family known as moray eels, making them related to such famous eels as the tiger eel. There actually used to be two separate species of ribbon eel, the ribbon eel and the black ribbon eel, however it was decided that they are so closely related that they are the same species, and so the genus Rhinomorena was reduced to having only a single one. When it comes to eels, the sea is a good place to start, though I suppose there are such things as freshwater eels, but the ribbon eels are most certainly not freshwater, and like the salty salty sea, though not the open ocean, they prefer the shallows and relative safety of lagoons and reefs. But where in the world might you find such lagoons and reefs containing this colourful rubber band? Well, many places actually over a very large distribution spreading from the eastern coast of Africa to the waters of Japan and down to Australia and French Polynesia. They are found in burrows and holes in the ocean floor debris and often seen like many eels with just their head poking out. Though reefs and lagoons are usually very shallow, these ribbon eels have been found as deep as 60 meters where the ocean floor still contains a lot of debris. As you can see, these eels have very strange nostrils, which are highly specialised to sensing prey and predators by detecting vibrations in the water around them. They feed upon shrimp and small fish, and will actively hunt for them. However, due to how vulnerable these bits of fishing wire are to predators, they will actually hunt nocturnally for maximum protection. This is why they have to rely upon the sensory organs in their noses so much, as the poor light levels mixed with rather small eyes anyway makes their seeing abilities rather inadequate for catching camouflage shrimp and fast little fish in the busy coral reefs or murky lagoons. They also have been observed to hunt stationary, just putting their heads out of their burrows to see what they might attract. There are both male and female ribbon eels and they produce sexually, however interestingly they're actually protandrous hermaphrodites, meaning that the males transition into females as they age. The females lay eggs that will then be externally fertilised by the males. Once the eels hatch they go through amazing changes in their colour scheme as they mature into adults, and change sex. When juveniles and male they will usually appear black, but then will completely change colour into a blue-yellow colour scheme they're most famous for as they mature to the adult male state. The males will then eventually turn into a more solid yellow from this bluey stage when they transition into becoming female. The reason that they change colour as they age and change gender isn't fully known, but is actually fairly common in most eels, and is usually to do with the hormonal changes that allow for eels to absorb different chemicals that are needed at different stages in their life. For example, the European eels go for a silvering stage, which allows them to produce more cortisol which is needed for their long migrations. Strangely though, in captivity the colour changes of the ribbon eel have not been seen to correlate to gender or age, and so there are still a lot of questions around this whole process. Like many eels as well, the ribbon eels live for a surprisingly long time, around 20 years. When approached by divers, many believe the ribbon eel to be aggressive because they are often met by open mouths showing off their rather scary looking mouths. This however is not an act of aggression, as many may perceive it. It is actually just the eels breathing. It obviously doesn't hurt that they also look aggressive doing this, as it can be enough to ward off some predators. Their long slender bodies make them excellent hunters, and much more nimble than your larger stockier eels, which is great for the reef lifestyle. Their flashy colours also do not impede their ability to hunt, as they are nocturnal hunters. As previously mentioned, mentioned, their most useful aspect is their flared nostrils, which contain all their very sensitive sensory organs. The eels are eaten by larger fish and sometimes even seabirds if they live in shallow enough water. Humans also pose a threat to them, not because we would ever eat these skinny little things, but for the exotic pet trade. Their beauty makes them quite desirable, however they do not do well in captivity and most die within a month, a long way short of their 20 year lifespan. They also don't breed well in captivity, so most that are have been captured directly from reefs. Because they don't make very good pets, it does mean that they are not targeted on a massive scale, and remain least concerned according to the IUCN. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you'd like to see more from us.